the second example that i will consider will be a three dimensional example and here is the mechanism that we are going to analyze while it looks complicated it will turn out that 3d is usually easier so what's the mechanism like well it says given omega 1 omega 1 is the rotation of this link about this axis find omega 2 which is the rotation of this link ad about that vertical axis and the angular velocity vector of the connecting link ab so that's what we got to find in a course in the third year called the theory of machines you will actually recognize this kinematic chain as it is called this mechanism as a four bar mechanism three dimensional four bar mechanism so let's go ahead and solve for this so over here i have redrawn this mechanism and i have put in some coordinate frames to help us along the way so let me go through them one by one the first coordinate system is the blue coordinate system which is attached to the link c b and it is the bfcs of the link c b the other bfcs that i have drawn here is the red one which is attached to the link a d and it has an origin at d i have also drawn here a vector which is along the axis BA and we will have occasion to use this so I am just going to give it a name and it is a unit vector so I am going to call it as n hat A B ok so it is a unit vector along the rod so as mentioned in the previous example our strategy in solving a mechanism or any mechanism with connected rigid bodies is to find a convenient point and write its motion in two different ways. The convenient points are usually at the joints of two rigid bodies. So I am going to choose A. Okay. So I am going to write the velocity of A in two different ways and when I do that I will be able to find equations for the rotation rate omega 2 of the link AD and the angular velocity of omega a b of the link a b so let's do that so as i said we will write the velocity of a in two different ways so first way a is a point on a d a is a point on this link a d so therefore i will now recall a formula that if we have two points on a rigid body then velocity of a point B on the rigid body is given as the velocity of point A of the rigid body plus omega of the rigid body cross R B with respect to A. The figure that went with this was we had a rigid body with angular velocity omega B and we had two points A and B and through this formula we could find the velocity of b in terms of the velocity of a and the angular velocity of the rigid body we are going to use this formula to find the velocity of a as a part of the rigid body ad okay so to apply that we will map b will be a a will be a point whose motion we already know so we know the motion of d on this rigid body because it is on the axis so vd is actually zero so we will use this as a convenient point from where to find the velocity of this point a so a will be d omega of b will be omega 2 along e2 prime so this happens because the link AD on the left over here is constrained to rotate about the vertical axis right so this is a constraint imposed by the ground link on the link AD so this is a kinematic constraint on the link AD our BA we can write down 
is simply d by 2 along e1 prime right d by 2 along e1 prime with this we can write down that the velocity of a this point written from the point of view of the link ad the first way is vd plus omega 2 e2 prime cross d by 2 e1 prime as i said vd is zero so therefore i will get that va must simply be minus omega 2 d over 2 e3 prime so this is equation 1 so i have now expressed the velocity of point a in one way i will do it another way to find the velocity of a in a second way i have to think of a as a point on the rigid link ab but i don't know anything about ab i do know something about b as a point on link bc so i will reach the velocity of a by first finding the velocity of b and then relating the velocity of b to the velocity of a because a and b are also on the link a b and then using the rigid body formula that i have over here so that's what i'm going to do so let's do that so second way a is a point on link a b so we can write down that v a is equal to v b plus omega a b cross r a with respect to b this is simply an application of this formula to this link a b but to use this formula i need to know v b b is a common point of link a b and the link c b so i can now think of b as a point on b c and i can write down v b is the velocity of c this point plus the angular velocity of the link b c cross r b with respect to c there's a subtle thing which is happening here which is is that i have considered b in this formula to be part of the link ab while in this formula b is a part of the link bc but these two links are joined in a way so that b as a part of link bc and b as a part of link ab always stay together so there are two coincident points here which always stay together b on bc and b on ab well continuing forward i know that vc is zero because it's on this shaft i also know that omega bc is omega 1 along e1 that's given to me so omega bc is also kinematically constrained to be omega 1 e1 and i know that rbc in the configuration drawn right now is along minus e3 and a distance d so rbc this vector is minus d e3 so let me write that down and then i can put all these equations together and i will get that v a is equal to omega 1 e 1 cross minus d e 3 plus omega a b cross r a slash b which will give me omega 1 d e 2 plus omega a b cross r a p this is equation 2 so there I have written V A in one way and I have written V A in another way and I can equate these two. So equating 1 and 2 I will get so I get this formula. In this formula how many unknowns do I have? Well here is an unknown omega 2 it is a scalar that is 1 omega a b is a vector that is three unknowns so i seem to have four unknowns over here but i only have 
three equations because this is a vector equation and a vector equation in three dimensions is three scalar equations so we may be getting a bit nervous here but let's keep on going so now what i am going to do is i am going to write omega a b in a slightly awkward way and i will it will become clear why i am doing it is i am going to express omega a b as a component along a b if you recall i had put in a vector n a b so i am going to say omega a b has a component omega a b a along n a b plus whatever remains which is omega n a b okay so i have simply split this vector omega a b in a component along a b and a component perpendicular to a b okay that's what i have done so let's use this here at the same time i should write down what r a b is so let me do that so r a b is well it is this much and that much and this much so over here i have to go d along minus e1 plus d along e3 and d by 2 along e2 so r a b is i can also write down what the unit vector n a b is this vector over here by simply taking the norm of r a b and scaling r a b with it and i will get back this to be so that's n a b i can put all of this terms together and i will get the equation minus omega 2 d over 2 e1 so over here i have used that e3 prime is along e1 in the given configuration this is important now in general e3 prime will not be parallel to e1 but in the given configuration it is indeed so i have used it and this should be equal to omega 1 d e2 plus omega a b axial n a b plus omega a b normal cross r a b r a b you will agree i can write down as the length of r a b which is root 3 d over 2 times the unit vector n a b so i am going to write down this as root 3 by 2 d n a b immediately i can cancel off the d's okay so let's rewrite this equation and now something interesting happens i have got omega a n a b cross n a b so this term seems to be vanishing okay so let's underline them these terms will cross out to be zero so i will get plus root 3 over 2 omega a b n cross n a b and let's call it equation 3 let's do a variable counting again i have one variable here omega 2 which is a scalar i know omega 1 and omega n a b it looks like a three dimensional vector but it's actually a two dimensional vector because together omega n a b and omega a b a form three dimensional vector so this is three unknowns omega a b one of those unknowns is omega ab a the scalar along nab and this is therefore two unknowns it is two unknowns because this vector lies in a plane normal to nab so this is actually two unknowns so totally i have three unknowns and three equations 
which I can now solve. I am going to tell you how we will solve it. So something interesting happened. Okay, we will be able to solve for part of the angular velocity of the link AB. Not all of it. We cannot find anything to get us omega AB A. Why is that? So let me explain that to you here on the left. So think about this. Suppose everything was locked. All these links were stationary. Even in that position, because the joints at A and B, these joints are spherical joints, so the link AB can spin about its own axis, the axis AB, the axis given by the unit vector NAB. What this means is that the angular velocity omega AB, which I can split into a component omega AB A along AB, just like I have done over here plus a component normal to the component along AB which is given by this explicit formula omega A B N right this is what I have written over here and this is exactly the split over here then we cannot expect to find the component of the angular velocity along AB and all we can expect to find is the component of the angular velocity normal to AB which is given by this okay. and that is why when we actually write down the kinematic equations and arrive at the final form the component of the angular velocity along AB has dropped out nothing in this connection of rigid bodies can constrain the angular velocity about AB so therefore the kinematic equations cannot carry that information okay so now I am going to go ahead and solve 3 to get the unknowns omega 2 and omega AB n so to solve this equation for the unknowns omega 2 and the vector omega n AB we will simply take the dot product and cross product of this equation with the vector NAB. This is driven by the knowledge that this vector is normal to NAB. So NAB dot with the equation 3 implies earlier on we had found NAB in terms of the vectors unit vectors EI. So we can write that down that we will get omega 2 by 2 minus 2 should be equal to omega 1 to 1. So this implies that omega 2 is actually equal to omega 1. So that's my answer for the first part of this question which was to find omega 2. To find omega a b n normal to the axis of AB as discussed we can only find that part of omega AB we will take the cross product of this equation with NAB so let's do that NAB cross this equation which will imply that plus NAB cross omega AB N cross NAB these quantities you can compute from the formula for NAB given here and I will not do so right now I will only point out that this quantity equals omega AB N and this is because this is equal to NAB dot n a b along omega a b n minus n a b dot omega a b n n a b but by definition omega a b n here on the left is normal to n a b so therefore this is zero so this is true that goes here 
so I can replace this thing by omega a b n and then from this equation I can find omega a b n as I have already found omega 2 here and omega 1 is known and this vectors can be computed from the formula for n given earlier. Okay, so that finishes this example.